It's when you walk past all these beautifully presented, fantastically valuable, coveted cars that you turn around and you see well, that sorry heap of crap. Uh, yeah, I was kind of hoping someone would come in overnight and magically fix it for me, but they didn't. So I'm going to ignore that for the moment and show you John's Vitesse. Because this is very much like my first Vitesse I had when I was 21. A uh, single plenum Vitesse, it's a later one, so it's got the deep chin spoiler, the side rubbing strips, Targa Red. John has done a massive restoration on that, like extensive wings, sills, quarters, pretty much all of it. It sounds good too because it's got the um, big chunky exhaust. But yeah, that's a seriously, seriously nice car. Then over here, we have the one that got rolled in yesterday. This is owned by Anthony, who has quite a few SD ones, but he basically saved this from a scrapyard. The story is that it was, got, it was weighed in and he got it about three hours before it was due to be destroyed. They'd actually sent the logbook off, but they hadn't issued a, uh, was it, a certificate of destruction. So this is very similar to my new one. It's a series one and a half on a W reg as well, but because it was always built as a V8 Vanden Plas, it has the sunroof, it has the bumper overriders with the headlight washers that actually work. Well, not actually wash wipe, but at least it will squirt water on them. Um, has the VAS style alloy wheels, side rubbing strips, and a few more gadgets inside like electric windows and stuff. But outwardly, I think it looks very similar to Dotty because it's that same sort of silver with the same rusty roof kind of patina going on. So it would actually be quite good to have them together and running, but left in a semi unrestored state. I think Anthony's plan is to do a full concourse restoration. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, whereas I kind of would like that just as a beater, like rolling around as it is, but you know, each to their own. I think Anthony's less encouraged by my plans for my blue one, which is to get the mechanicals right and then just leave all the, des uh, sorry, the dents in it and just roll around in it like that. But I'm going to get all my kit out now and go create a shopping list of Jubilee clips and all the other crap I need um, to keep me going through this weekend, forging bits back together. It's the morning of day two, which is Saturday, of course. I haven't really done very much. Uh, I spent most of my time chatting. What I did do was fit the bonnet badge, the front embellisher panel, whatever you want to call it. And then under here, I got the airbox in, sorted some more of the batteries, some more brackets and things, water pipes, and then that air intake trunking, which is um, a special neoprene stuff. So it's dead flexible, but really good for heat. It's also got a steel wire reinforcement, so it won't collapse under vacuum, because of course that turbo is sucking. And when it sucks, it will want to um, collapse that pipe. So that will go in there nice and neat. Uh, so today, I want to get the clutch and the brakes bled up, finish installing a lot of these other pipes. There's a few bits of hose which I've reinstalled just because I had them, but they're a bit second-hand and old, so I might go up to the top and see if I can buy some replacements. Oh, I also put that rubber seal in and another bonnet hinge, so this is all like quite stiff and works. I still haven't fixed the bonnet release cable, so what I've done is I've just taken the latch off the underside of the bonnet so that it won't get stuck down shut. So, I don't know how much I'll get done today, but it's quite nice just chatting to people and tinkering and then going for the occasional wander around here. So we have this sorry looking mirror. In this car they're actually electric, um, but they're both bollocks. The one on the other side I actually had to cut off on the M40 because it was dangling down and smashing around. Um, but I have got a pair of new manual ones to go on. This one has a bit of a dent, but the other one's mint, so I'm going to swap those now. Mirrors on, even that makes a bit of a difference to the appearance of the car, so pretty pleased. This one's really nice, no dents whatsoever, just needs good clean. I've also discovered that the 
um, thinners for the Jotun 87 makes an excellent overspray removal. So there was a real clear distinct colour change between my new paint and the old paint on the roof and there still is but once you rub it down with the thinners it just turns to dust and comes off so potentially there's um, it's not going to be as ugly as I first thought I'm now just going to do some comedy painting of some bits and pieces for the engine bay and try not to paint too much of the NEC floor although I should probably charge them because the floor is horrific at the moment Right, well, I haven't done much filming the last day and a bit. Well, I don't think I have. I actually can't remember last time I had the camera on or what I did. But anyway, this was the troublesome offside rear wheel. It wouldn't rotate nicely. And what I presumed had happened was that the adjusters had stuck on and left the shoes against the insides of the drum. But what had actually happened was that the slave had seized. So it's about three hours till the end of the show. I've been up to the bric-a-brac bit, found a pair of SD1 cylinders, and I'm gonna swap this one and see if I can reinstate this brake. Then I can bleed it, then I can go home. Okay, well that optimism of doing another job didn't last very long at all. Uh, basically, I have made another discovery, and that is <coughs> this hard line, where is it, that one, where it goes into that union I can undo the union from the master cylinder but that pipe is well seized to the union so as I'm undoing it it's basically torquing up that metal line which is why the paint and the rust is delaminated and come off so if I actually try and remove that cylinder that brake line is gonna shear off and then I'll piss fluid everywhere so unfortunately I'm gonna have to leave that there as it is today the end of the show everyone puts their high vis jackets on or a lot of them do and then we all go home uh, the car still doesn't drive so I've got to wait until they open the gates for trailers which will probably be in an hour or so get that in here then have fun winching it up again but it should be all right the car looks okay I'm taking the yellow fog lights out again because they were just loosely balanced in there um, but it looks a whole lot more complete than when I brought it in on, what was it, Thursday? Yeah, so, happy really. I wasn't going to do any sort of like, more like walk around commentary, because that's best left to people like Hubnut, but if you're ever coming to one of these shows, and... Your attention please, when moving vehicles, Basically, all I was going to say is you actually get a better view of the cars at the show if you stand by one of the exit doors and they all drive past you, which sounds dumb but it saves you walking around and if you're lazy like me that can only be a good thing. You also get to hear them and smell them, which sounds a bit weird but I don't know, it just adds to it a bit. So yeah, if you're ever coming to one of these shows, I highly recommend just loitering around like a lazy man. Everything goes past you, minimum effort required, and then you get to actually hear them. Plus, you never see all the cars or give them the full appreciation when you walk around in the hall. See, that's very different to seeing it statically on the stand. I don't know what that is. Scepter, Humber Scepter. That looks French because it's ugly. Renault. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, Mustang. Good night. Oh, I really want one of them. Like, same vintage as the SD1. Oh, another one. See, I didn't see either of them in there. And I've been there for three days. Anyway, I'm going to stand here for the remainder of the afternoon until I can go and get my trailer from the trailer park and drive it in. Uh, 
and I won't bore you with that. You can come yourselves one time, maybe. See, that is mad. I didn't see that either. Right, toodle pip. I'm recording that because it's unusual. It's a two-door Cortina, which I didn't actually know existed. But apparently they do. 1300, there you go. That's Peter, our resident Cortina expert. And here comes Noisy Mark in his noisy Ford Pop. And here comes his missus running this in front one. of him, so she that, can get it on Is that his missus? Yeah. Oh, right. BRM, one of my personal favourites. Yeah. That's a badass car. <laughs> noisy Mark. <laughs> I didn't see the trans there. Oh, yeah. That's cool. Is it? Crazy oh, VA. Berg? Yeah, he's saying and, and dash and everything. Has he stalled it? <laughs> On camera, fantastic. That's a, a rather nice car. Yeah, it's pretty badass. All the dash inside. Yeah. It's like my paparazzi cam for the zoom on this is nuts. Oh, that's cool. The V8 as well? Yeah, it's a um, Piranha. A what? Piranha. Granada Piranha. Ah. V8. Right, I've relocated because from this roundabout you get to see everything from all of the halls making their way up. What's that, a racing Mark II? Ah, that's nice. This could get quite boring because I'm just going to be saying, oh, that's nice, and then misinforming you about what different cars are because I have no idea about quite a lot of them. But fun nonetheless. <laughs> See, what the hell is that? I think it's an Austin 1300 with a roof chop. RS 500 or Cosworth, I don't know. One of my personal favourites, 800 turbo. Every time I turn my camera off, something cool turns up. I guess it's to be expected at this kind of show. So that's rather nice. As is that. As is that. That's cool, but not so much. Mike Brewer, I didn't know he had that. So that's it. 
show complete. It's now about 7 p.m. on the Sunday night. Car is all loaded up, ready for its trip home. Still not driving. Um, I didn't get an opportunity to free the clutch off because for that I wanted the brakes working and I wasn't able to get the brakes working because that slave was seized and had I tried to unseize it I'd have ruptured that brake line and you know can of worms but the car's a lot better off than it was when I brought it up um, I've made some really good contacts and lots of really sort of interesting people have come and talked to me a couple of guys who used to work on them back in the day giving me all sorts of tips on the individual cylinder heads and how to go about assembling them properly so they don't either crack or um, have gasket problems. I met a guy who's actually got one himself and another one in a field next door and he reckons he's going to help me with some trim possibly. Um, I also met a hub nut which was pretty damn cool and I got a photo of him next to the car so really chuffed with that and I had a chat with him and showed him around so yeah that was really cool actually because I love those videos if uh, you haven't seen them go on YouTube and look for hub nut and he does reviews of kind of every man cars but real world tests and just commentary he's a knowledgeable chap as well so yeah you should go look at that so I'm gonna go head home it's a long drive and um, oh, I'm not gonna unload this tonight I'm just gonna leave it in the car park on the trailer so I'm off for probably a Burger King I think I've deserved Burger King several hours later plus a Burger King I'm home car's home nothing's fallen off I can't be bothered to unload it tonight because I'm knackered so um, I'm gonna go home and I don't know chill out I think plan what's next probably research other novel ways of freeing off clutches <laughs> 